Good morning, CLC. There's one, a wonderful Spirit of the Lord right now in this sanctuary. And so I'm going to invite you right now, if you're just walking in, to join what's happening right now in the Spirit in this sanctuary. We're going to let our Spirit connect with the Holy Ghost. Allow the Holy Ghost that dwells with inside of us to once again be reverberated through the Spirit right now. Connect right now with Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity right now to come into this sanctuary to worship and glorify you. Jesus, we recognize and know that you are the one and only true living God. And we are the sheep of your pasture. And we're coming into this sanctuary as your sheep, reaching our hands out in glory to you, Jesus. You are our loving, kind shepherd. You care for us. And Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for making a way for us to come into this building right now or for us to watch this service online right now, Jesus. We magnify you. If you're sitting with your family, reach over, put your hand on them. Let's bind together as the body of Christ. Let's pray that the Lord's will be done in this sanctuary right now. That every individual that walks into this service and every individual that joins us online will feel the Spirit coming into their spirit right now. Jesus, we thank you. We ask that you'll touch my wife, that you'll touch my children, that you'll touch those families right now as we bind together. Let your Spirit reign upon each one of us, Lord. We allow the worries and the concerns of the week melt away right now in your presence where it's replaced with hope and joy, Jesus, and strength from you. Let your anointing reign through every song that's sung, every note that's played. We give this all to you, Jesus. Let your spirit reign through the word as it is already anointed. We ask that your spirit touch our minds and our spirits for what you have in store for us this morning. Allow the Holy Ghost to speak to you for a moment right now. All together in one mind, in one accord, let's shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus! Thank you, Jesus. We're going to go before the Lord in worship this morning. You may be seated if you'd like. In Jesus' name. Wonder if one more time this morning we can just lift our hands and glorify Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We lift our hands to glorify you this morning, God. We love you, Lord. We worship you, God. We praise your name, Jesus. Worship with us this morning. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood.
die for us, Jesus, so that we can be free, that we can be set free from all our chains and all our bondage, God, because you loved us so much, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's worship the Lord this morning, Jesus. We worship, we love you today, God. We worship you, Lord. On a Far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the Jesus, we worship and honor you. And thank you, Lord, for the spirit that we feel right now in this place. This morning, we've sung about the blood of Jesus. And if you need the blood of Jesus to touch you right now, whether it be a healing in your body, the 
Bible says that by his stripes we are healed. The word says that the blood of Jesus washes away all sins, all infirmities. It is by his blood that we have hope today. And if you need a little touch of hope, if you need a little touch in your body, if you need the Lord to intervene right now in your family, just simply raise your hand right now across the sanctuary. Brothers and sisters, look around you. Families, pray, pray with families or reach your hand towards somebody right now with their hand raised. We're going to bind together. We're going to pray for Brother Jose Cisneros in the hospital right now. We're going to pray that the Lord performs a miracle in your life, Brother Jose. We're going to pray for every miracle that's going to be represented right now in this sanctuary right now. In Jesus' name, we go before your throne right now. Your word says, by your stripes, we are here. Everybody that's right now in this sanctuary and that's watching right now online, we ask that you'll touch Brother Jose right now in Jesus' name. Your healing power right now. We rebuke cancer in Jesus' name. We rebuke heart disease right now in Jesus' name. We ask right now that your supernatural peace will be upon every individual that needs that right now, Jesus. Lord, that hope will be renewed right now in your presence. For those things that seem impossible, they are not impossible with you, Jesus. Nothing is impossible through you and your blood, Lord. We forgive these needs right now and we worship you and thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for intervening on our behalf. Thank you that we have an advocate with the Father and it is through you, Jesus. And today we're going to go before the throne for this country, for this state, for this city, for it truly needs Jesus. And we want the Lord to use us to be the witnesses to, the, to our neighbors and coworkers and those we come in contact with to share Jesus with them. Lord, we go before you right now. We thank you, Lord, for this church. We thank you, Lord, for your blood. We thank you, Lord, that what we're feeling right now, but Jesus, we ask that it will go out from this place and that it will reach the north, the south, the east, and the west. And it must give up the souls that belong to you and that belong into your kingdom. Jesus, we ask right now that you'll touch those that once knew you and once had a thriving relationship with you. Right now, we ask that it will be awakened right now in Jesus' name. And those that never knew your name and have not come to know you yet, Lord Jesus, we ask that you'll send one of us, that you'll help us to be the salt and the light to our friends and families and coworkers, those we come in contact with, whether it be in person or online, Jesus, we ask that you'll give us the wisdom to share you, Jesus, the boldness to share you as the Holy Ghost with inside of us. We ask that your spirit be poured out right here in Stockton, California, as it is in heaven. Let your spirit be poured out on this state as it is in heaven. Let your spirit be poured out in the United States of America as it is in heaven. Jesus, we ask that you'll touch this country, for Congress needs you. Our president needs you. Jesus, we need you right now to intervene, Lord, that your will be done in this country. That you'll touch our governor, Jesus. That you'll fill him with your spirit, for he needs you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for a Holy Ghost filled, Holy Ghost filled state, Lord Jesus, that we have right now, Lord. That there are people in this state that are filled with Your Spirit all throughout, and we are the beat of witnesses, Jesus, for You. Thank you, Jesus, for our city. Thank you for our state and our country. We give it unto You, Jesus. We're not giving up. We're not giving up. We're not going to stop. We're going to go before the throne right now, Jesus, for you have all things under your control. And we trust you right now. The Lord is good, church. The Lord is good. It's now time for our Sunday morning tithe and offering. If you have a physical contribution you'd like to give, you can do that as you exit the sanctuary this morning. Of course, you can continue to give online. 
Let's go before the Lord right now. Jesus, we thank you for your many blessings and your provision upon this church, upon your body as a global entity, Jesus. You have provided for the needs of your people. And Jesus, we go before you right now, giving the tithe which belongs to you and the offering above and beyond. And thanksgiving, Jesus, what we have is not ours, but it's yours. And you've made us stewards over it. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your blessings and your provision. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you as you give this morning. Hallelujah. Is anyone glad to be in the house of God today? Anyone glad to be in the house of God this morning? Come on. Can somebody praise him this morning? Just give him glory. Give him glory. Somebody exalt his holy name. His name is a name above every name. Come on. We love you, God. We praise you in this place. Only you are worthy today of all the glory, God. We give it to you. 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 Well, I feel the Holy Ghost today. Amen. Amen. And I do believe that the Lord has uh, ministered a word to my soul today that I want to share with you. It is a message of personal motivation for me that drives me into this season that God is taking me and this church and his church in general. He's taking us into a powerful season. Amen. A season where we have no intention of slowing down, but we're going to speed up in the Holy Ghost. Hey, uh, we're not putting the brakes on. We're, we're pressing the gas pedal. We're saying this world needs Jesus. Hallelujah. Does anyone believe that this morning? This world needs Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Well, I'm so grateful to be here this morning. And I'm so grateful for our pastor, Pastor Haney, who has uh, shown the confidence of having me come up to this pulpit. This pulpit, I reverence the words and the great men who have come to this pulpit to minister some mighty words for his people. And I am just so honored to be here. But more than anything, I just want to move of God today. I want to hear his word. I want to be stirred up by his word. This word that I want to share with you today, I believe, is important. Because the church has an important role in this coming season of the world that we're living in. As we're progressing towards the end time, we are in the end time. The church has a role. And we must be sure to step in to that role and do what God has called us to do. And for that reason... I want to preach on the powers of the world to come. 
on the powers of the world to come. Now, I'm going to move pretty fast here with a lot of scripture. But if you could take some time after this. I want to say this because I, if I don't say it now, I might forget to say this later. If you have time on your own after service today, perhaps read Romans chapter 6, 7, and 8. And 2 Corinthians chapters 3, 4, and 5. They're connected to each other in such a powerful way. There is much that we can learn from these three chapters as we compare them one to another. We see that the Apostle Paul was in the same vein of the Spirit in writing particularly these three chapters. And we're going to look through these chapters here, uh, these verses, some verses of Scripture in these chapters, um, and hear from God today. So if you, we can just start today in Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. We will begin there. Amen. Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Word of God says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died in sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Hallelujah. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, hallelujah, this is powerful, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Hmm. We who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Has anybody been baptized into Christ Jesus today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But just as we were baptized into his death, so because he rose from the dead on the third day. Hallelujah. So we have newness of life. Lord Jesus, I come before you today, Lord God, and I just ask you that you would have your way today. May your word settle on our hearts and on our minds, God. Kola shatala I pray, God, that my mind and my heart would be quickened, God, by your living word. And today, God, as we explore your word, Father, give us a spirit of revelation, God, today. Hey, a spirit of revelation and understanding, God, in our hearts and in our minds today. Open up our spirits, God, to receive your living word. Reach down, God, into us today, God. And move on us by the power of your Holy Ghost today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Here in Romans chapter 6 verses 1 through 5, we see a very powerful principle. That those of us that have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death. If you know anything about the purpose of Jesus Christ, we know that Jesus Christ came to redeem the world of their sin. The word of God says that he died for our sin. We just talked about the blood. We sang about the blood earlier, and this is what it means. It's that the blood that Jesus Christ shed on the cross, this blood represents the death of Jesus Christ. And because he died for our sin, we could not die for our own selves. We could not fix our own selves. We could not redeem our own selves. We needed the Lord 
Jesus Christ to do it for us. But now that he has died, he has supplied power in his blood to redeem us. And that power has not changed. Though he said it, he bled and he shed it, Lord he said it more than 2,000 years ago. That blood still has power to change lives, to renew our hearts, to change our hearts and our minds. Hallelujah. And that is exactly what the Apostle Paul is talking about. He said, if you have been baptized into Christ Jesus, uh, you have not only been baptized into his death, uh, but we know that Jesus rose on the third day day and he rose with all power and all glory and all life and just because Jesus and just as Jesus rose in life we too rise in life hallelujah when we come into covenant with him Jesus explained it this way to a man named Nicodemus in John chapter 3 hallelujah he was explaining to Nicodemus that is it is imperative that you be born again of the water and of the spirit uh, you gotta be born again he was confused uh, he didn't really understand what uh, Jesus was talking about how is it possible that we can go back into the womb of our mothers uh, and Jesus told him you don't quite understand what I'm saying what I'm saying is that you need to be born again in your spirit uh, you gotta be born again on the inside God's gotta do a work in you that changes uh, your direction in life uh, and you gotta be baptized in Jesus name under the water so that you can be forgiven on your sins uh, and you can be transformed uh, by the power of the Holy Ghost has anyone ever experienced that in this place uh, I don't know about you but the day that I received the spirit uh, it was the best day of my life uh, and since that day Day until now, I have been a different man. The Word of God describes it in another place in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that we are a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things, hallelujah, not just some things, not just some areas of your life. All things, somebody say all things. All things have become new. You're not the same, hallelujah. That's right. You're not the same. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that gets involved and renews us. And many times when we study scriptures like this, because it is a spiritual transformation that occurs, we lose sight many times of the reality of the complete transformation that God is going to bring about in our lives. Many times, if we're not careful, we can read such powerful figurative language and think that it is simply a metaphor it's simply a metaphor for something that re occurs in the spirit but can I tell you church that this is simply not true it's not just symbolic language it's not just a metaphor because the word of God does say in uh, first John chapter 3 verse 2 and I want to read it for you first John Chapter 3, verse 2, it says, Beloved, now, somebody say now. Now we are children of God. Hallelujah. Somebody say today. Yes, today you are a child of God. You're not a child of God tomorrow. You're not going to be a child of God years from now. Now you have the power of being called a child of God. But yet the word of God says, hallelujah, it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is what is this talking about it's saying that because we have been born again now we are able to be called children of God but yet it has not completely been revealed everything that we shall be but we know 
that if we die in this flesh when Christ comes back from the church uh, for the church in his second coming he's going to raise our bodies from the grave uh, and our souls will be united with our bodies uh, and if there was any sickness that sickness is going to be gone if there is any tiredness in our body it's going to be gone if there's any corruption in our flesh it's going to be gone because the transformation that occurs now that makes us into children of God will complete its process in that day. What this means is when the word of God says that we are a new creation, it is talking about something that happens both now and will happen in the future. The spiritual transformation that happens now will be completed in the future and our bodies will be resurrected and we shall be made whole hallelujah why because when Jesus Christ rose from the dead he didn't just rise as a spiritual being but his body was resurrected and he was glorified and because of that our bodies will be transformed and we will be like him for we will see him just as he is we will be glorified we will be transformed but do not make a mistake just because when you go down in baptism in Jesus name and just because you get filled with the Holy Ghost it doesn't change anything physical about you the size of your nose stays the same you don't grow a few inches taller you stay exactly the same and you may look but however you may look the same to anybody else's eyes you may it may look like nothing happen to you but how many know that on the inside God has done something powerful and he oh hallelujah can anyone testify this morning uh, about the transforming power of the Lord Jesus Christ but this is what I want to get to today for us as God's people there is however a tension meanwhile that we experience having received the Holy Ghost in this body at this point in time and I want to take you to a verse of scripture in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 to explain this a little bit more 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 it says for we know that if our earthly house this tent is destroyed we have a building from God a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens verse 2 and this is important for in this we groan hallelujah earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven hallelujah if indeed having been clothed we shall not be found naked for we who are in this tent we're in this body we're in this flesh hallelujah grown being burdened not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed. That mortality may be swallowed up. Hallelujah. I love that language. That our mortality would be swallowed up by life. What is the Apostle Paul referring to here regarding the tent? This is in connection with chapter 4 where he says that we have this treasure, this glory of God in earthen vessels. In vessels that are made of clay. Vessels that are tainted with mortality. However, God invests his power and his glory in this earthen vessel. Why? That the excellence, as chapter 4 verse 7 says... That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Hallelujah. But meanwhile, the glory of God 
is in this earthen, earthen vessel. We are yet aware. We are conscious of the fact that this earthen vessel is weak. This earthen vessel gets tired. This earthen vessel has weaknesses within it. We're not supposed to be discouraged about that fact because we all know that in our weakness, the Lord God is yet strong. And through our weakness, God manifests his glory. Hallelujah. So that no man may glory in their own strength and no man can brag about their own abilities. But we all here, we need the power of God to help, help us carry on and to fulfill the will of God in our lives. We need him. Hallelujah. We need the Holy Ghost. Amen. But yet we are aware. And because we are aware, yes, it is true. It, it, is, it is not true that the whole church is without, complete, without sickness. You all know, and many of us know here, that there's just some things that occur in our bodies that we cannot avoid. Eternal life is not for this time and this life. It's for the life that comes. And so we experience pain, and we experience growing, groaning. We experience the limitations of our mind that we don't understand certain things and and our, the, the the wrinkles in our face is going to come our hair it's going to turn gray our bones they're going to hurt sometimes as time goes on and there is nothing we can do about it our loved ones are going to pass away and there's something on the inside of us that no this isn't quite right this isn't quite normal this isn't the way that it's supposed to be and so in this earthen vessel though we have eternality in our spirits there is still our mortal flesh that is saying everything is not right yet we yet need a redeemer we need a God to make everything right yeah and if we read in Romans chapter 8 verse 20 we see that that's not the only thing that groans. But we see in Romans chapter 8, verse 20. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now the ground itself, creation itself knows that there is something wrong. It's not just us. It's not just you as a child of God. But creation itself is aware that there is corruption in the world. There is corruption in the ground. The word of God says something very interesting. That when Cain and Abel, when Cain went and he slew Abel, the blood of Abel dropped onto the ground. And God said, Cain, I hear, I can hear the sound of Abel's blood that's in the ground. Something is crying out from the earth. Why? Because it was not natural for the blood of man to be spilled on the ground. It was God's will that we would live in the Garden of Eden. But the time came where blood spilled into the ground. And from this ground, a groaning was sounded that there is something that is wrong with creation. And it wasn't God's fault. It was our our fault it was humanity's fault because of their own sin now imagine if from the very first death and from the very first drop of blood that was spilled on the ground God could hear the cry of creation 
Imagine the generations that have gone by of violence, of blood that is spilled on the ground. If we just include our modern day, imagine how much is occurring right now. And one of the greatest things that I have in my mind is abortion and thousands and millions of babies that have been killed, that have been massacred. God hears the cry of every soul that has died innocently and the blood that is you can't bury that thing and think that it's going to be silent you can't bury it in the ground you can't bury it under a home you can't lock it away in a mortuary every single baby God hears the cry of the blood there's something that is not right with this world something is corrupt something is burdened by sin and creation is in labor we see many things occurring in the world today earthquakes that are occurring and things that are the world knows there's not some there's something that is not right something is not right with the world and that's not the only thing but because when we see in Romans verse 26 just a little while further Let's read from verse 23. After it talks about creation groaning. Not only that, but we also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. Hallelujah. For we were saved in this hope. But hope that is, not, that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. Hallelujah. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered tremendous because we know we live in this body we know there are things that are not quite right things are imperfect there's a lot of weakness there's a lot of burden here involved with living in this world in this body and creation itself is aware as well of the corruption that is in the world but also the Spirit is aware as well. The Spirit is well aware of the corruption that is in the ground. The corruption that is in our bodies. The Word of God says that we, even in the level that we understand that there is something wrong, we are aware that there is pain in us and pain in the world. We still do not have a complete understanding of all, all of the pain. And truly, our groanings do not compare to the groaning of God, to the pain that God feels. Because if you think your life is hard, imagine a God that is aware of every single person's situation and every single person's suffering, not just in this life, but the suffering of every individual that has died from Adam and Eve until now. He is aware. And if God's ears was already attuned to one man, he yet hears the sound of all humanity that has died from the beginning of time until now their blood is still crying we cannot hear that cry but God he is aware and his ear is open even to the past imagine you having to hear the cries of generations of people that have suffered so the spirit groans as well and we in our flesh in our weakened flesh we do not know how to pray as we ought because we don't 
don't know what's in the mind of God. What's in the mind of God? It's much more potent. It's much more aggressive. It's much more aggressive because it is the spirit that is aware of all that evil that has occurred from the past until now. That is why when we pray and we intercede, it often becomes a violent endeavor that twists our body and makes us shout in ways that do that does not seem natural and we begin to speak in other tongues let me tell you why because we are praying not with the burden of our own flesh we are praying with the burden of the Holy Ghost and that burden is a burden that is not natural to you and I but it's a burden that comes on the bus from the pain of God and from the groaning of the spirit is anybody understanding what I'm saying today hallelujah you may think you know what pain is but God knows what pain is he knows the suffering of the world and he has chosen you and I to pray and to intercede and through us reach out with the groaning of the spirit for a world that is dying and needs help because the reason why that creation is growing Growing in our flesh, which is part of the creation, is growing. It's because the world is sick. It is sick with the evil and the corruption that was seeded within it. Inside of the flesh is an awareness. I am breaking down. Something is happening in my body. I feel it every day. But for a child of God, we say, but there is something on the inside of me that is still alive. There is something on the inside of me that is driving me what is it it's the eternal power of God that is stirred up in our spirits that's why we as I may be a little bit younger I may a much a lot younger than many people but that's why the prayer of our elders though they can't shout like we shout and run the aisles like we run their prayers are full of the weight of the Holy Ghost they're still alive with something that is stirring on the inside reaching out for a world that needs to know who God is hallelujah Hallelujah. But yet in Romans, it tells us even more. In verse 19, it says that creation is groaning, desiring something specific. It says here, in verse 19, for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for something very special. It waits for something that you and I can be involved in. You and I are involved in. Hoda Shabasa. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God my 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 for the creation was subjected to futility mm, 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 mm. and in verse 21 because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God Wow what is creation groaning for? What is creation asking for? It's asking for the manifestation of the children of God. Creation is asking for you and I. And many times they just don't know it. <sighs> many times they're just not aware. Can I give you an example of what that means? That means when your coworker shares with you something that's going on in their life, 
when somebody who lives according to the rhythm of this world shares with you and says, hey, man, something's happening in my home, something's happening in my body, I have sickness. And you are a child of God. They have no idea what they're asking for, but what they're really asking for. Anyone in this world that is even grasping for healing in their body by going to a hospital, by asking for medication. They may think they're asking for medication, but what they're really asking for is the manifestation of the children of God, and they just don't know it. They're not aware, but they say, give me this and give me that. Do an operation here, an operation there. Let's save up money because I have to get this done. And really what's going on is their body knows there's something wrong with me. Their soul knows there's, I need to go to a counselor, right? I need to get, I need to get some counseling for my mind because my mental health is lacking. You know what they are? They're aware. There's something wrong. There's something wrong with my mind. I'm not thinking right. I'm not acting right. And they think that what they need is a counselor but really on the deep on the inside of them what they're really asking for is the manifestation of the children of God they just don't know it yet they, and they don't know it many times because we haven't preached it yet and we haven't shared it yet but what this world needs is Jesus whether they like it or not they need Jesus they may not want Jesus but they need Jesus and their body knows it their minds know it their souls they know it on the inside something's wrong and I need help and this is why they're waiting for the manifestation of the children of God. If we go back here to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. You remember that verse of scripture? Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Lord, 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 Lord. We are called by God to have the ministry of reconciliation. In this same book in chapter 3 describes it as the ministry of the Spirit. If you see it there. In chapter 4 it describes it as the ministry of the manifestation of truth. And in chapter 5 it describes it as the ministry of reconciliation. What this means is that because we are children of God, God, he shouts, he groans, he calls through us to the world, be reconciled. Every time we pray for Stockton, it's us. We are reaching out. We are saying to Stockton, be reconciled. When we pray for our backsliders, when we pray for people who have walked away from the things of God and we declare the power of God over them, we are reaching and we are shouting, be reconciled with God. And so God has given us the ministry of reconciliation, the ministry of the Spirit, the ministry of the manifestation of truth. And we are called by God to be this. That is why we were reborn. Once we were reborn and we were made this new creation, too many times we just stop at that verse and we don't realize that there is a greater purpose. God didn't just fill you with the Holy Ghost. 
Ghost so you can have a party and we can have a party within this church us four and no more but as soon as you were made into a new creation God gave you a ministry doesn't matter who you are you can be a youth you can be a child you can be an adult you can be whatever age it doesn't matter who you are because you are a new creation you have a ministry today you have a ministry that God needs you to fulfill it is a ministry of reconciliation calling out to the world saying be reconciled come close to God and know who God is hallelujah this is why when Jesus Christ was teaching his disciples to pray, he told them to pray this way. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because when we were born again, if you study that verse of scripture, what that means is that we were born of above. We were born of another kingdom. We were born of another place. The apostle Peter said it this way. We are travelers. We are just passing through. I may look like I belong here, but I don't belong here. I got something moving on the inside of me. And I may have a job like you have a job, but I promise you, I am not of this world. I belong of a different world. Which is why the word of God, when it describes what has happened to us, it says that in Hebrews 6, 5, that we have tasted of the good word of God and we have tasted of the powers of the world that is to come. We have tasted of that power, and that power, it doesn't belong to this world. Neither does it belong to the science and the rules that this world has. We have drawn power from a world that doesn't belong here. This is why, this is why, church of God, when we pray in Jesus' name, something happens that doctors can't explain. Something happens that psychologists can't explain can explain something happens that this world cannot explain and I'm telling you it's because when we call on the name of Jesus we are pulling heaven down to earth we are pulling from a world that does not belong to this world we are drawing from the powers of the world that is to come such that because there is no sickness in the world to come, we can pray in Jesus' name and the sick can be healed. Does anyone believe it this morning? Hallelujah. When something's wrong with somebody's mind, we can lay our hands on somebody's head. Hallelujah. What does laying a hand on somebody's head have anything to do with healing their body? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. I just bought a vial of oil here that I used to pray with for my wife the other day. I used this oil. What does oil have to do with praying for people? What does oil have to do? It has nothing to do with their sickness and it's not because of my hand that people are healed it's because there's power there's power in the name of Jesus and there is power that no man can explain no man can justify it no man can understand it but you know what I know what I do know is that it works it works it works to pray in Jesus name it works and it will never make sense you can't theologize it you can't philosophize it you can't write it off there is power in the name of jesus and every time we pray we pull that power down every time we pray we bring that power in and something happens that Satan can't control something happens that Satan can't resist something happens that Satan he can't fight against why because he's the prince of this world but guess what I'm not from this world I was back here I don't belong here this is not my home you can have this world Satan I come from above I come in the name I come in the name of 
of Jesus. I don't need. I don't need human accolades to be powerful in the kingdom of God. I don't need the recognition of man. You may think it's a good thing to have money in the bank, but let me tell you, I can have zero money in the bank and still be powerful in the things of God. And that's how many of us are here. We don't have anything. We don't drive fancy cars. We don't have a lot of money. But I got the name of Jesus. And I have the powers of the world that is to come. Church, don't let yourself ever be intimidated by the things of this world, by the rich of this world, and by Satan because you don't belong here. You're a foreigner. You're a foreigner. You're that foreigner who came by and takes dominion. You see, so many times we look at the devil and we see him as a big bully. We see the devil as a big bully, like as if it's a bully walking into the schoolyard. But can I tell you, it's not Satan that's the bully. You're the bully. You're the bully. And Satan has been working a long time to establish the kingdom of Satan. He's been working longer than you. He's been putting more hours in than you. He is older than you. And what am I, what am I, a 32-year-old thinking that I can fight a devil and I can push? Who am I? What am I? What, uh, I'm, I'm nothing compared to him, but that's all right because God has given me his power. He has given me his name. And too many times we're afraid of the devil when it's the devil that is afraid of us. It is Satan that is afraid of us. He's not the bully. Brother Chris, he's not, I'm the bully. And when I step on the schoolyard, I'm claiming the name of Jesus. I'm calling it out. I'm calling the sick to be healed. I'm calling them to be redeemed. I'm calling them to be saved. And it doesn't matter how long Satan has been holding Stockton. It doesn't matter how long Satan has had his claws in this city. This church is going to rise up in the Holy Ghost. And we're going to walk through it. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, these gangs, they think they've been holding these neighborhoods for years. But as children of God, we step into the enemy's territory because the gates of hell shall not prevail. And that's what we're going to do. Hallelujah. That's what we're going to do. And this world wants to keep pushing us down, but it's not going to work because the gates of hell shall not prevail. They try to shut us down during the pandemic. They already tried to do the best that they could do. And guess what? It didn't work. We are still here. We're still praising God. We're still praying in Jesus' name. Brother Morgan Ellis. We've been having events, and I'm so grateful for you and your ministry. In our events with Lifeline, hallelujah, we've already had more than 20 people, new believers come in. We've started more than 10 Bible studies. Hallelujah. <laughs> and just on Friday, we had a, had a deaf revival service where there were literally deaf in the altars who were speaking in other tongues. Hallelujah. Who can explain that? That doesn't make sense. They've never heard a language in their life. But the word of God says, hallelujah, that they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And Acts chapter 2, and they spoke like tongues of fire. And the spirit is the same that it was back then. It's the same today. And God wants to manifest his power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm telling you, church, it's not time to slow down. It's time to speed up. Hallelujah. It's not time to hold back. It's time to move forward. We can't spend our whole time looking at ourselves and saying how much we hurt. God knows how much we hurt. And each and every one of us has likely experienced 
pain from the pandemic. And can I tell you why? It's because we know there's something wrong. It's not natural for a virus to come by and kill. That's not right. It's not natural. But instead of making us sit down, it should stir us up to preach more. It should stir us up to pray more. It should stir us up to preach more. Because we already know it's not normal, but we know a kingdom that is in heaven. Hallelujah. Woo. So what are we going to do as a people? What are we going to do as a church? Can I tell you, it doesn't matter what state, physical state you're in. As a child of God, you may have some ailments. You may have some back pain. You may have some, some sickness in your body. But can I tell you, even though you have sickness in your body, did you know that God can still use you to pray over the sick and they be healed? Just because you got something wrong with you doesn't mean you don't have power. You have power in the name of Jesus and you're a great child of God. And the only way Satan is going to win, it's not because he can overpower the church. In fact, Satan has never overpowered the church. He has only convinced the church to not already be what God has called us to be. But if we should understand the power that's in the name of Jesus, something's going to change. Something's going to happen in our atmospheres. Something is going to happen in our families. Something has to happen. It has to happen. Why? because we believe in the name of Jesus and that that name still has power today. And you know what our greatest benefit is? Our greatest benefit is that Satan cannot replicate what only God can do. He's trying. Don't you think that he would have found it already if he could find some way to keep the world captive and still make them not lose their mind? Can I tell you what Satan is? He's like, has anyone ever worked on a car? You've got oil on your fingers. And until you wash that off your feet, you're going to be staining things. You're going to be staining your shirt. You're going to stain things, right? Because there's oil on your fingers. The same thing with Satan, right? He's trying to create different types of belief systems to imitate peace, to imitate joy. But he can't help but stain them with, a, with an unsound mind. He can't help but to cre create corruption and the very lives that he's trying to keep away from the house of God let me tell you why it's because Satan he cannot replicate the things that only God can do that's why a medical doctor will never be able to do what the name of Jesus does and a, a psychologist and a counselor he will never be able to do what only the spirit of God can do can I tell you, as far as Satan can go, he could only, he could only help die down the symptoms of pain and groaning. That is why all the, all, the, uh, all the approaches of medicines many times, it's not even meant to cure you. It's just meant to make it tolerable it's just so that you can get through the day. All kinds of painkillers that this world is addicted to. Why? Because they can't cure their back. They cannot cure their disease. They're at their wit's end. So they just gave, give them a bunch of painkillers. It's the same thing with psychology. There comes a point in time where the counselor knows I can't help this person so you know what I'm just gonna help you get functionally through the day I just want to make you functional but God doesn't want to just make you functional he wants to change your whole life he wants to change the nature and he can do it he can do it he can heal the broken mind he can fix the fragmented soul he can heal you where no other person can heal you does anybody believe it this morning come on does the church believe it today does the church believe it Can we stand to our feet today? 
Look, and if you're a child of God, you're having struggle believing, you have to believe it. You have to believe it because God has a ministry for you. He has a ministry for your life. It's the ministry of reconciliation. It's the mis- ministry that cries out to your friends. It cries out to your family. It cries out to your co-workers. It cries out to the city. Be reconciled with God. Be reconciled and be transformed. But what we need today is the burden of the Holy Ghost. We need the burden of the Spirit of God. I'm not trying to downplay your problems. I'm not trying to downplay your pain. God knows, and I know we all experience pain. It's something that we're going to have to experience in this life. We can't avoid it. It's part of being the earthen vessel. It's part of being a mortal man. It's part of being knowing that this world, this earth, it's, it's temporary. It's not going to last forever. But something has to overcome our own personal pain. Something has to overcome our self-centeredness and we got to begin to look at the world because if we suffer with pain as children of God imagine a world that doesn't even know who Jesus is imagine a world who doesn't even know where to turn it's time that this church we take up our arms in the spirit and we reach out to this world to tell them there is a God there is a God that can change them there is a God that can make all things new There is a God that can make all things new. There is a God. There is a God. There is an answer. There is an option. There is a path. It's the only path. His name is Jesus. The question today is, will we allow the spirit to groan through us? I believe this is directly tied, this groaning for heaven, this groaning for the kingdom that is to come, for the children of God is directly linked. The reason why it's affected, effective in the kingdom of God is because it is directly linked to what Jesus said. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And many times we look at this verse of scripture, we say, blessed are those who feel sad or mournful about themselves. But can I tell you, there is a type of mourning for this world that occurs when one groans in the Holy Ghost. There's a mourning that occurs in us that can occur where we're reaching out to God on behalf of our loved ones, on behalf of our city. God doesn't want us to stray away from that mourning, but we got to learn how to mourn. This is why we fast, not just for ourselves, but for our city. And when they fasted in the Word of God, in the Bible, it's because they were in a time, many times, of mourning, of asking God, come, Lord, come, Lord, help, help, help help can i tell you the word the world doesn't know how to ask god for help the world doesn't know how to reach out to god can i tell you that's the reason why we reach out for them they don't know how to mourn and request the, we request for them and we say god come thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth, right here on earth as it is in heaven. Come down, O Lord, and manifest your power. Pour out the power of the worlds to come, and we will see great revival. Only if we know how to step into the burden of the Lord. And we take upon our own lives, we take upon our own selves the burden of God. If you have problems yourself, if you're going through things yourself that you need God for, can I encourage you and tell you that so many times God has healed my own and dealt with my own life situations, not because I was praying for myself, but because I was praying for another. 
And many times I'm praying for my brother and saying, God, encourage them. And I'm going through my own discouragement. I say, God, encourage them. And then he gives me a word for them. And I give them the word and I'm encouraged myself. I say, God, I, t- I took from that. I was blessed from that. And you know why? You know why I was blessed? Because I was trying to be a reconciler. Tried to be a, I I was acting in the ministry of reconciliation. So many of you, God is going to bless you. God is going to pour out his blessing on you, his encouragement on you, his power on you, his healing on you. (laughs) And you know what? I really believe this. In Jesus' name. If you activate the power of God and you being sick, go to somebody who is sick and you pray for them in Jesus' name, God is going to heal you through your prayer to them. I believe that. I believe it. If you have an ailment, if you have diabetes, you want God to heal you from diabetes, find somebody else with diabetes. Say, in Jesus' name, be healed. Hallelujah. And I believe God's going to pour out his healing power on you. If you got cancer, pray for somebody else. If you're discouraged, pray for encouragement for somebody else. And be a minister of reconciliation. And God, he's going to overflow. He's going to overflow in this church. He's going to overflow in this city. He's going to overflow in our lives. He's going to overflow in our families. But we have to be willing. We have to be willing. We have to be willing. Can we just raise our hands right now to heaven? God, in Jesus' name. Somebody's got to be willing to pray. Somebody, somebody's got to be willing to have the ministry of reconciliation. Somebody's got to learn how to pray. And God will pour out his power. Somebody's got to learn how to cry out for this world. Somebody's got to learn to have a burden today. I have nothing else to say this morning. I have nothing else to share. But my desire is that we step in today. We step into the burden. We step into the ministry of reconciliation. We step into the ministry of the Spirit. We cry out. Somebody cry out for your family. Somebody cry out for your church. Somebody cry out for your city. Somebody get a burden of the Holy Ghost and let God pray through you. And can I tell you, power is going to come down. Power is going to manifest through you. Power is going to show up. Power is going to show up. And it's not a power of this world. It's not a power that belongs here. You're pulling down heaven right now. Come on. You're pulling down heaven to earth. You're pulling down heaven to your situation. You're pulling down. Somebody pull it down today in the name of Jesus. Somebody get a burden to pray in the spirit. somebody's got to learn how to do it there's a world that needs your prayers there's a world that needs you to pray for them they don't know how to cry out to God but you know how you know how to cry out to heaven you know how to cry out to the Lord you know that he is able you know that he can you know that he is enough Yeah, 
I feel a fighting spirit coming upon me today. I feel a fighting spirit today. I'm fighting for my family. I'm fighting for my church. I'm fighting for my city. I'm not slowing down. I'm going to speed up in the Holy Ghost. God's about to save them. God's about to reach out and reconcile them. But we got to pray. We got to learn how to pray. We got to learn how to have the burden. The burden of the Spirit. The burden of God. The pain of God. The pain of the Holy Ghost. The pain of the Spirit of God. If I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray with the groaning of the Spirit. If I'm going to preach, I'm going to preach with the groaning of the Spirit. Hey, if I'm going to give a Bible study, I'm going to do it with the groaning of the Spirit. With the ministry of reconciliation. With the ministry and the manifestation of the children of God. The world is waiting for you to pray. The world has been waiting for the manifestation of the children of God. And we are here. We are here to pray, God. We are here to reach out to you, Jesus. Come on, the world is waiting for your prayers. The world is waiting for your prayers. They're in anticipation of the manifestation of the children of God. You're the children of God. You're the children of God. It doesn't matter if you've done it a thousand times already. You keep praying in the Holy Ghost because something is happening. It doesn't matter how many times you've already prayed your prayer. Keep praying in the Holy Ghost today.